friends, today I'm going to be showing you how I like to do watercolor lettering using these Pentel Quash water brushes. Um, I've used other water brushes, but these are still my favorite, so this is what I'm going to be using today. And I have a size small and a size medium to show you the differences. I'm also going to be using these concentrated watercolors. These aren't liquid, they're in a tube, and these were just really cheap from Walmart, just like a few dollars for the whole set. And I think they work really well, so this is what I'm going to be showing you today. So first I'm going to start by using this little bowl. It's just like a $2 bowl from Target in their little dishes section. Um, it works really good to mix your colors in here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of each. You really don't need a lot because we're going to add water to this as well. And I'm just going to mix these two colors. And you can add some water. I don't have any with me, so I'm just going to squeeze a few drops out of my water brush. And I have ruined a few water brushes just over the course of using them, so I wouldn't recommend using the end of your brush to stir this. I'm just using the end of an old paintbrush that I don't use that came with a palette set. So it's kind of up to you, the consistency. I like my watercolor to be a little bit thinner. I like to see like the opacity and I like to see it dry. Um, some people do watercolors really, really thick and it almost just looks like paint and it's totally up to you. I just like it to be a little bit thin. And I also think it's a little bit easier to letter with if you are not um, having like really thick paint coming out of your brush. So. And I'm first going to show you the small water brush. This is my favorite for lettering. Um, it's really thin and I have never found a small size in stores without buying a really big pack. So I do purchase these ones on Amazon and I just buy the two pack because I don't think you can get it by itself, at least not for a good deal. So I first just put a little bit on the end of my brush and we can just do a little test here what it looks like and that's kind of the thickness that I go for I like to be able to see through the colors uh, and see on the paper um, if you do find that it's a little bit too thick you can add a little squeeze while you're lettering just don't squeeze too hard because pretty much every aquash water brush I've had will squeeze out the sides so if you're lettering and you have a big drop of water just like that um, you definitely don't want that on top of a project that you're working on so this is perfect as far as consistency for me. So I will just move on to lettering. So one of the reasons that I wanted to show you this today is because I've had a lot of people tell me that they're struggling with getting their upstrokes to not look shaky. And that's a super common problem and I'm gonna do a whole video on that later. But I think that a water brush or even a watercolor marker is a really good place to start because it won't, you won't notice your shakiness as much um, on a water brush. It's just a little bit more forgiving than a brush pen. So if you are struggling with a brush pen, this might be a fun way for you to practice because some of the shakiness is just having a steady hand. And the more you practice, the steadier your hand will be. So I just wanted to recommend that you guys try this if you haven't already, if you are struggling with that part of lettering, because this might be helpful for you and it might be a little bit more rewarding if you are frustrated every time you letter with those shaky upstrokes. So this pen, this um, gets super super thin upstrokes and I like it because of that reason but it's also really soft. I've tried another brush pen and the bristles were really hard and it made for really thin upstrokes, even thinner than this. But the problem was when we have these underturns where I was trying to go like from here to here, the brush was not soft enough for me to be able to go over that curve without the um, bristles like going all out and fanning out this way. So for that reason, I buy these water brushes. So if you're thinking about trying others, there are some other fun ones out there, but I've just struggled with that little part of it in lettering. So let me show you this compared to the size medium. So here is the medium and the small together. And as you can see, the medium's quite a bit bigger. I haven't used this one yet, so I can just show you it's really soft. 
and you will get a lot of flexibility with letters with this brush specifically. I do really like it, it's just that if I'm writing smaller letters, I prefer the small. But for bigger letters, if I'm prepared to letter something all over the page, I really do like the medium. So let me just show you how that one works. I also found this tray at Hobby Lobby in the clearance section for like $5. And it's perfect for lining up my pens here. That's definitely not what it's for. It was in the home decor section. But if you are interested, that is where I found that. And it's been working perfectly. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Get my pen a little bit wet and maybe just squeeze a little bit of water down into the bristles. So as you can see, this makes a thicker downstroke for sure. but you can still get really nice upstrokes as well. And the reason that I like these concentrated watercolors is because I find that you just have to apply less than watercolors in a pan. Or some people do ink in their water brush, but I do want to mention that that will stain. So if you use ink, be prepared for your water brush to become whatever color ink you're using from the inside all the way to the bottom. It's fine, you can wash it out and still use other things in there, but just wanted to mention that. Um, it does look more like ink coming out versus this actually looks like watercolors. It is just a different way to apply your ink, so. So as you can see, these brushes make them go on really nicely, it dries really nicely, and you definitely get that true like watercolor effect. If you have any more questions about lettering with a water brush, please leave them in the comments box below and I will get back to you. And I'm just going to do a little bit of sped up lettering here so that you can see the final product. But if you aren't already following me on Instagram, you can do that at howtohandletter or make sure to subscribe below for more videos. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.